Would it be true to say that you own most of the world? No, only the free world. Most of the free world? Yes, that would be true. How did you do that? I bought it. Didn't you inherit the southern hemisphere from your father? Yes, I did. I started off with no more than the country I stand up in. Well, now you're in television, newspapers, magazines, coal, gas, films, cattle, sheep, horses, wheat, travel, records, lotteries, music publishing and sport. Yes, I diversified. Get on with it. I've got a meeting to go to. Does diversifying mean owning everything? Yes, it does, in the free world. Let's look at it from a different point of view. What's the difference between the third world and the free world? Well, the third world is run by three people. And the free world? The free world, you idiot, is run by three other people. <laughs> is there any one thing you want that you still haven't got? Rosebud. Rosebud? What's down there? A little child sled I've always been rather fond of. You'd take a toy away from a kid? Why not? It's a free country. <laughs> And while everything crumbles around him, where is the Prime Minister? Does he exist? How low can a profile get? The Australian public's wondering where I am, Mick. They're worried, mate. It's ongoing. They're ongoingly worried. We can't go on hiding from us subjects. We've been locked away here for nearly a month. We've got to do something. I, I can't go out like this. I know, I know, I know. Don't worry about it. We'll think of something. Bear with me. I think if we... Hopeless, I'm invisible. Overwhelmingly invisible. You don't even see as much in Andrew as they see in me. Look at me. It's the last time you mix me a health drink, I'll tell you that. Excellent, Bob, well, for heaven's sake. I mean, that's just. Look, first you get rumbled with a toy bear up your jumper, then you redesign the federal election and we nearly get the arse because no one can understand it. Then you swim your glass of whatever it was and I'd disappear all the bloody get up. Why don't we paint you? We'll give some artistic bastard a grant to come in here and do a job on you. Mick, it won't work. You can't paint air. Paint has to have something to stick on to. Well, we'll wrap you up in something. I don't want to be wrapped up and painted, Mick. I want to be bloody visible again. But... Yes, yes, of course he can say... No, no, he can... T tell him to write me a letter or something. <laughs> you will ring Hazel and tell her I can't see myself uh, getting home for dinner. <laughs> yeah, what do you want? No, you can't see him at the moment. He's not here. On top of that, he's busy. Of course he can be busy and not here at the same time. Look at Reagan! <laughs> For Christ's sake, we've got enough problems without you going 15 rounds with the furniture. The Invisible Man, they seek him here, they seek him there, running the country with one hand, trying to find himself with the other. Will he be seen in public again? And what of Mick? Is Graham Richardson going to take over where he left off? Stay tuned. <laughs> The matter with it is an idea, Mick. Except that it's another one of yours. <laughs> Appoint another Prime Minister. Nothing simpler. Split your game, son. Who's it going to be? Lionel Bowen? No, I don't suppose Lionel can do it now I come to think about it. <laughs> Lionel is invisible even without a bottle of fall down. Who else? Bill Hayden? Vietnamese told Bill Hayden to go and jump in the lake and he was photographed jumping into a bloody lake. <laughs> Lovely leadership material, is it? What about Keating or Duffy or Beasley or Ralph Willis or Barry Cohen? You're clutching at straws, Mick. I'm the Prime Minister. I'm famous for it. There's never been a Prime Minister in the history of the country. I've got to come back. The country doesn't want a second eleven. Well, hang on, there's someone at the door now. <laughs> it's the phone. <laughs> Hello. I'm not here. Hello? Bill! We were just talking about you, Bill. It's Bill. <laughs> Could have fooled me. Hey, Bill, we'd like you to uh, make a formal statement on the Camp Achean position as it affects whatever's left of Anzus. Would you do that for us? <laughs> Good on you, mate. Well, there you go. There's three weeks. He doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Maybe I should go to Washington. Oh, I wouldn't do that, mate. Not after what Bill's going to say. Oh? What's Bill going to say? Well, I don't know, but I wouldn't go to Washington after he said it. Get out of press release. Say, so I've, uh, I've gone to Canada. 
to run an economic summit for a week or so. Is anyone going to believe that? Uh, of course I'll believe it. Why would an Australian Prime Minister go to a summit meeting on the Canadian economy? Uh, just do it, Mick. And so they issued a press release. Then four days later, they issued another one saying he was back from Canada. Unbelievable. Can they keep getting away with it? And what of mixed coordination? Will it improve? Don't go away. <laughs> it was on the conventionally powered ship Venus. My God, you should have seen us. The figurehead wasn't made of lead. It wasn't shaped like anything in particular. <laughs> a very concerned individual. He made a stand against nuclear arms and we respect him enormously. <laughs> Boy was nasted. He was consistent in formal argument. His chances of success in Australian politics are estimated as minimal. The first mate he was slugger. He was a recognised expert on interest rates. His case against the entry of the big foreign banks was compelling and greatly admired. <laughs> the engineer was Lopper. My God, he had a difficult job. <laughs> His position on land rights and concern for the environment endeared him to everyone immediately. <laughs> the shit's dog's name was Big Balls, although no one's sure why it was called that. There was nothing remarkable about the size of his knackers and the name was gratuitous and offensive. <laughs> the bosun came from Tiflis. He had a very charming weekend. He collected species of different native shrubs and grew an enormous patch of basil. <laughs> Labor Party policy since the year dot to nationalise the banks? Have you seen <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, This is all right. I'm not crazy about this at all. Oh, no, it's better than nothing. It'll do for the taxation summit. I'll have to be photographed from over there. And I'll uh, stay out of Victoria. The party me. isn't going to like this at all, Bob. I can see you moving your lips, mate, but I can't hear a bloody thing you oh, say. I don't think you're fit enough to go out. I've never felt better in my life. But you can't go out there again with only one lobe. I'm not going to let that happen. We didn't spend ten years in the wilderness drawing up a blueprint for Australia's future to have it screwed up by a Prime Minister with diminished responsibilities. Look at yourself. I'm not going to let it happen. You can't stop me, Mick. I didn't scramble through the ranks and pull the Labor Party up by the bootstraps and win two bloody elections and become the most popular Prime Minister that this country's ever had to have it taken away by a technicality. Well, I don't think you're going to get away with it. I'm going to tell the whole story. This country's still a democracy. You see how far you get. Oh, come in. Uh, uh, do you notice anything uh, unusual about me? Yes, of course we do. You're an extremely remarkable man. Oh, yeah. Uh, you. Uh, listen, get a straight jacket, will you? Mix had another accident. Has he got away with it? Will the public fall for it? Will it be good for Australia? And what of Mick? And what of Andrew? What of John? And what of Bill? And doesn't anyone care about us? <laughs> 